Hi friends, this is Arujan here. Welcome to my networking channel. Hope all are doing good. And today the topic I'm going to discuss how to troubleshoot MPLS. So before going to troubleshooting, I'm going to show a quick overview how MPLS exactly work. So the unlabeled packet will be sent from C1 to provider edge router. This is a provider edge router. And at the transmitting end, we'll be do a label imposition or we'll push a label onto the prefix or the packet. And this label packet will be sent to the provider router, right? So in this provider core router, what we'll do, we'll do a label swap. So what it does means it will swap the label say from 17 to 16. And again, this label packet will be sent to the provider edge router at the receiving end. So at the receiving end, we'll again remove the label from the packet and it will send only the unlabeled packet to CE2. So this is how exactly the MPLS works. So what is the configuration we're going to do for this MPLS is first normally we'll configure VRF. So VRF is nothing but a, like a VLAN. So VLAN what does, we'll just break the single physical circuit into or we'll just segment a single physical switch into multiple smaller broadcast domain. The similar way, what does VRF is a single global routing table, we'll segregate into multiple smaller virtual instances. So each and every virtual instance we call it as a virtual routing and forwarding table. So that is mainly used to differentiate between several customers. So there can be thousands of customers in the MPLS cloud. So to differentiate between the several customers, we are using this VRF. And under this VRF, I'm going to assign RD and RT value. So that is the thing I'm going to do. And the second thing, I will be assigning LDP and IGP. So I already told this will be sending the label, right? So for advertising the label and distributing the labels between the MPLS router, I'll be using LDP and IGP configuration. So in this case, IGP I'm using as OSPF. So OSPF, what it does, it will trigger the LDP advertisement between this MPLS router. So once that is done, I'll be using MPBGP between this PE1 and PE2. So these are the basic configuration mandatory for the MPLS to work, right? So the third configuration is MPBGP. So what is MPBGP? So when this advertiser labeled right to this corresponding core router, it will advertise along with the RD. So the combination of RD and prefix collectively called as a VPN V4 route. So for advertising the VPN V4 route between this PE1 and PE2, we'll be using this MPBGP, right? And the fourth thing, what I'm going to do is we'll be configuring the communication between CE1 and PE1. So I already done with all this configuration. So just for a better understanding and for troubleshooting, we need to understand what exactly MPLS is and how to configure, right? So these are the basic configuration we'll do. So in this corresponding architecture, what is happening? In the corresponding CE1 routing table, I am not getting the prefix advertise over here. So this prefix is not get, getting advertised in CE1 and this 1.1 prefix is not getting advertised in this corresponding CE2 routing table. So we need to fix the issue. So let us go one by one. So first let us go to the MPLS cloud backbone router and let us see the corresponding configuration. So let us go to PE1 first. So first what is the command is show MPLS interfaces. So this will show whether the LDP is enabled. So it is already enabled, right? So this LDP is already enabled. And similar way let us go to P. P router is a MPLS core router. So MPLS interfaces is a command, right? So the MPLS LDP is active on, on this P1 and P router. So let us go to PE2. Show MPLS interfaces. So this is also fine. So next what I'm going to do, let us now check the neighbor. So ne next thing we have to check the neighbor relationship. So it will establish the LDP neighbor relationship with the corresponding MPLS router. How to check it? Go to the P, P router. Show MPLS LDP neighbor is a command. So this will show the corresponding neighbor. So LDP always dynamically discover the neighbor using UDP and it will establish the TCP connection. So here you are able to see the neighbor, right? So 4.4.4 and 3.3.3. .3. So these are the corresponding neighbor. So this is a loop I have defined. This is 2.2.2 and this is 3.3.3 .3 and this is 4.4.4. So the neighbor relationship is working fine. Let us go to PE2. Show MPLS LDP neighbor. So here also neighbor is coming up. That is 3.3.3 .3 is fine. So let us see from PE1. So these are the basic command you should know while troubleshooting the MPLS. Show MPLS LDP neighbor. So the neighbor is coming up. So what I'm going to do, let us ping from, second thing troubleshooting is let us ping from PE1 to PE2 interface. So PE1, let us ping. Let us go to PE1. So ping 4.4.4 shows this loop back 0. So I'm able to reach from PE1 to PE2, let us do from PE2. Show ping 2.2.2. So this is the interface of loopback address of PE1, loopback 0. 
so i'm able to reach from both p1 and p2 so this is working fine so now what i'm do, going to do the second thing is so the mpls interfaces we have checked we have checked the mpls ldp neighbor so now i'm going to check the forwarding table let us see show mpls forwarding table so this is forwarding table is nothing but it is it always works at the data plane so it will contain all the information like prefix and label so it is containing all the information for all the prefixes and the corresponding label so this is the way we can check the mpls forwarding table show mpls forwarding table so this end is also working fine right so if you want let us do a trace and check trace 4.4.4 .4 .4, that is a pe2 address source loopback 0 so i am able to do the trace from p1 to p2 the connectivity is fine second thing is let us do a trace from p2 to p1 trace 2.2.2 .2 and the source is loopback 0 so that is also working fine so how to check the vrf interfaces you can check like this go to p1 show ip vrf so the vrf i have created is red vrf name and this is rd rd value is 1 is to 1 the same i configured for rt so let us check from p2 show ip vrf so now everything is fine from this mpls backbone end so now let us go to the customer and let us see what exactly is happening so let us go to customer edge router and let us now check the entry show ip bgp all summary so the neighbor relation is coming up and the third one, one more thing we need to check is we need to check the mp bgp between the p1 and p2 so we already checked the vrf communication we checked the ldp and igp configuration ldp relations is already established so now we have to check the mp bgp between p1 and p2 so let us go to p1 what does the command is show bgp vp and v4 unicast all summary so this is the command we have to check for advertisement between the vp and v4 so mp bgp is a protocol we are used for advertising the vp and v4 route between p1 and p2 router so this is the thing so bgp vp and v4 unicast all summary so here you are able to see the neighbor is coming up everything is fine so let us check from p2 also show bgp vp and v4 unicast all summary so I'm able to see 2.2.2 .2 and everything is working fine, right? So what is the thing I'm going to check is I'm going to check the neighbor relationship between customer edge router and PE1 and customer edge router and PE2. So let us go to CE1. I already checked, right? Show IP BGP all summary. So here always you have to check show IP. But in this case of PE1, we'll check show BGP VPN4. Why means this is a VPN V4 establishment between PE1 and PE2, not a IP. So it always establish a VPN V4 route by means of MPBG protocol. So here we ought to always we have to check the IP BGP. So let us check from CE1. I am able to reach. So let us check from CE2. Show IP BGP all summary. Yeah. So they were able to reach. Right. Interface is coming up. So let us ping. 192.168.12.2. We are able to reach. And let us ping from CE2. What is the neighbor is 192.168.45.1. So the neighbor is also coming up. So now let us uh, dig the issue. What is the exact issue? I am already told this corresponding prefix. This is a loop bug I have defined in CE2. So this prefix is not advertised in this corresponding routing table. And this CE1 prefix is not getting advertised in the CE2 routing table. So let us go to CE1. So let us do the show IP routing entry. So here you are able to see the difference, right? I am able to see this corresponding loopback address, but I am not able to see this corresponding route. That is 5.5.5 prefix is missing over here. Let us see from CE2 also. Show IP route. So show IP route, what I am seeing, I am not seeing the remote entry. This entry I am not able to see. So now we need to go and fix the issue. What is the main reason we are not seeing? So as per the BGP loop prevention mechanism, this AS1, this CE1 and CE2 both are in the same autonomous system number. So what happened whenever this one receives a prefix from this CE2, so it will analyze that it is in the same autonomous number. So it will discard the prefix. This prefix is already discard. And CE2 also, whenever it receives update from the corresponding CE1 routing entry, it will see that it remote is also in the same autonomous number. So it will simply discard the prefix. 
Why it is discarding means this mainly for loop prevention mechanism. So as per the BGP is path loop prevention mechanism, whenever it sees the update in, in, its, in its own path automatically, it will discard the update. So it will always receive the prefix from the remote on the autonomous system. Whenever it sees its prefix in its own path, it will see that it will think that better to discard the prefix. So that's the thing is happening. This 5.5. prefix not getting advertised in the CE1 routing table. And this 1.1 prefix is not getting advertised in the CE2 routing table. So how to fix this? So there is a mechanism we need to use is allow AAC. So this is a command allow AAC. So this is a command we are going to configure. So this after configuring this what it will do? It will allow the update from the same autonomous system from the remote neighbor. Right this one. And this also will I have to configure the same command in CE2 table also. So how to configure? Let us go here. So this is the configuration I have done. So this is the configuration I have done, router BGP1 and the network I have advertised is that loopback address and the neighbor command. So how to configure, let us go to router. So configuration router BGP1 and the neighbor is, what is the neighbor is 12.2, right? This is 12.2, 192.168.12.2 and we have to allow AC. So this is the command we have to do, do and the same thing we have to allow in CE2 also. Let us go to CE2. Go to the configuration mode, router BGP1. This is also in the same autonomous system number, right? And neighbor is 45.1. So the neighbor 192, neighbor is 192.168.45.1, allow AAC. So after configuring this, what happened? It will allow the update from the remote, even though it is in the same autonomous system number, it will allow the update from this corresponding CE2 and CE2 also will allow the update from CE1. So that is the purpose of allow AAC. So this command always you have to configure on customer edge router, not on the provider edge router. So now let us check the routing entry. So now let us do the show IP route. So now you are able to see the routing entry, right? 5.5.5 I am able to reach. So this prefix is getting advertised here. So let us check the CE2 entry, show IP route. So now I am able to see, let us know ping the remote entry. That is 1.1.1 .1 is a loopback address. Let us do the source loop back zero. So I'm able to ping from CE2 and let us check from CE1. So ping, ping 5.5.5 and the source is, sorry, source is loop back zero, right? So ping 5.5.5, that is CE2 address, source is loop back zero. So I'm able to ping. So let us do a quick trace to understand the exact MPLS process. So let us do from CE1. So let us go to CE1. Trace 5.5.5 source is loopback 0. So we are able to see, right? We are able to see the trace. The trace is completing. So from the C1 all the way, I am able to reach C2 customer edge router. So let us see from C2. So trace 1.1.1 source is loopback 0. So all the way, I am able to trace from C2 to C1. So this is how the MPLS work, right? So let us see the trace. Or what is the trace? Is 12.2. So this is an unlabeled packet. So when it reaches the provider router, that is 23.2, it will add the label. So that label you are seeing here, there is a label. Then again, this will 45.1, it will swap the label again. So then the receiving and it will send the unlabeled packet. So this is how the MPLS architecture works. So I hope you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Thank you.